Welcome to Think Seed Learning. Our topic for this video is kinetic and potential energies. In this video, we compare gravitational, elastic, and chemical potential energies with kinetic energy. You'll see how different types of stored energy, like height, stretch, or bonds, can transform into motion and how they are alike and different. Have you ever stretched a rubber band and then let go? At first, the rubber band is full of stored energy, just waiting to be released. The moment you let it go, that stored energy changes into motion as the band snaps forward. But how does energy stored in one form become energy in motion? To answer that, we first need to understand what energy actually is. Energy is everywhere. A skateboard rolling down a ramp. A soccer ball flying across the field. Or a bird soaring through the air all clearly have energy. But even things that aren't moving, like a book resting on a shelf, or a ball sitting on the ground, also have energy. That's because energy is the ability to cause change. No matter the form, energy makes things happen. Think back to the rubber band. When it's stretched, it has energy stored up, and when you let go, it causes change by moving. Now that we know what energy is, let's look at its two main forms. Energy usually shows up in two main forms, potential energy and kinetic energy. Potential energy is stored energy, energy waiting to be used. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion, energy in action. Together, they make up mechanical energy. Imagine a ball resting at the top of an inclined plane. At the top, it has potential energy because of its position. Once it begins to roll down, that potential energy changes into kinetic energy as it moves. Let's start by exploring kinetic energy a little deeper. Kinetic energy depends on two things, how much mass an object has and how fast it moves. The heavier something is, the more kinetic energy it has when moving. And the faster it moves, the more kinetic energy it has. Imagine two shopping carts at the grocery store. A full cart has more mass than an empty one, so when pushed at the same speed, the full cart has more kinetic energy. But if the empty cart is pushed faster, its greater speed can give it more kinetic energy than a heavier cart. But not all energy is about motion, some is about position. Let's look at gravitational potential energy. Gravitational potential energy. One of the most common types of potential energy is gravitational potential energy. The energy something has because of its height and weight. The higher something is, the more gravitational potential energy it has. The heavier it is, the more potential energy it has at that height. For example, a water bottle on the top shelf has more gravitational potential energy than one on the bottom shelf. Two basketballs on the same shelf have the same potential energy. But if one basketball is placed on a higher shelf, it has more. And if one is heavier, it also has more gravitational potential energy at the same height. Of course, potential energy isn't just about height. It can also be hidden inside materials themselves. Some potential energy is stored inside materials themselves. This is called chemical potential energy. Wood in a campfire, batteries in a remote control, and the food you eat all contain this kind of energy. The wood stores energy in its bonds until it burns and releases heat and light. Batteries store energy until they power a device. Food stores energy your body uses to move and grow. Potential energy can also come from stretching or compressing objects. Another kind of potential energy is elastic potential energy, the energy stored when objects are stretched or compressed. A stretched bowstring on an archery bow is a great example. The farther it's pulled back, the more energy it stores. Springs in a mattress and the cords of a slingshot also work the same way. The coils in a mattress compress under weight and store energy, then release it to push back when the weight is removed. 
The stretched cords of a slingshot store energy as they are pulled back, and when released, that stored energy launches the object forward with motion. So now that we've seen the different kinds of energy, let's compare how potential and kinetic energy work together. Let's compare the roller coaster cart's potential and kinetic energy at each point on the track. At point A, the cart is at its highest position. Since height is greatest here, the cart has maximum potential energy and minimum kinetic energy. The speed is very low or nearly zero. At point B, the cart has dropped to the lowest point on the track. Here, the height is smallest, so the cart has minimum potential energy but maximum kinetic energy. Its speed is the fastest at this point. At point C, the cart climbs another hill, but it is lower than point A. The cart regains some potential energy while losing some kinetic energy. Its speed slows down compared to point B, but it's still moving. At point D, the cart goes down again. The height decreases, so kinetic energy increases while potential energy decreases. The cart speeds up as it goes downhill. Overall, as the cart moves along the track, energy constantly transforms between potential energy due to height and kinetic energy due to speed. But the total energy stays the same. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion, and potential energy is stored energy. We saw how they are connected. A ball at the top of a hill has potential energy, and as it rolls down, that energy changes into kinetic energy. The same happens with swings, roller coasters, and even stretched rubber bands. Energy is never lost. It just moves back and forth between potential and kinetic all around us every day.